grace, mercy, and peace unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this series in the book of Ephesians. We have now come to chapter 4 that talks about the Christian walk. We pray, Lord, that you will give us clarity of thought. You will speak through us. And, Lord, that you will help us to not only be hearers of your word, but to be doers as well in Jesus' name. Amen. The Christian life is described in the scripture as a walk. It is a walk that begins with a step of faith and baptism and, continue, and continues through a life of practical righteousness. In our epistle reading, Paul is discussing the Christian walk as a life of practical righteousness. He reveals two rules we must keep in order to walk the Christian walk. The first rule for walking the Christian walk is we must avoid our old way of life. We must avoid our old way of life. Paul said to the Ephesians, you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do. The term Gentiles in this context refers to non-Christians, but it is a word used to describe the old way of life. The old way of life is a life without Christ. It is living as if Jesus had not come, live, die, and risen again. It is living like all that Jesus did doesn't matter. Paul describes our old way of life, our non-Christian life, six different ways in this text. We were, when we were not yet saved, when we were not yet Christians, we live in the futility of our minds. Our thinking and living were without regard for God and eternity. We live in the darkness of our understanding. Our mind was cut off from knowing God. We were incapable of reasoning through things from God's perspective. We live in alienation from the life of God. We were excluded from the life of God. We were dead in our sins and trespasses. We were cut off from God. We live in spiritual ignorance of God. We were unaware and lacked discernment. We could not understand the things of God. They were foolishness to us. We live in the stubbornness towards God. Our hearts, our heart was stubborn towards God, towards the gospel message. It was hardened and lost the capacity to feel. We are also, we also live in moral corruption. Our lives were all taken by sensuality, greed, and impurity. Paul says we practice all kinds of impurity. What a gloomy and dark picture of the old life. What a contrast between our life now in Christ and our life without Christ. Oh, I thank God that we are now new in Christ and that the old has passed away. For Paul says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, we have become new. Paul painted a dark picture of our life without Christ for a reason, that we may see the miserable and helpless life it was, so that we can avoid going back to live it again, that we may see the sinfulness of it, and never think about living it again. 
that we may see the difference between our new life in Christ and our life without Christ so that we can give God the praise and the glory. The second rule for walking the Christian walk is this, that we, that we must adopt the new way of life. That we must adopt the new way of life. Paul exhorted the Ephesians to adopt their new way of life by implementing what they have learned in Christ. He reminded them about how they heard and responded to the gospel and how that they were taught in Christ the way to live their new life. Paul outlines two lessons that the Ephesians were taught about how to live the new life in Christ. They were taught to put off their old self and be renewed in their minds. Paul says, this old self belongs to the old manner of life, which is corrupt. And they were taught to put on their new self. Paul says, this new self is created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. How were the Ephesians taught to put off the old self and put on the new man? How are we to put off the old self and to put on the new self? Paul gives five practical examples of putting off the old man and putting on the new man as we adopt our new way of life. We are to put off falsehood and put on truthfulness. We are no longer to lie to our friends, but instead speak the truth to them in love. We are to put off anger and put on love. We are not to allow anger to control us any longer. Instead, we are to put our anger, honor, control. We are to put off stealing and, and put on generosity. We are to stop stealing and start working to help others in need. We are to put off corrupt talk and put on holy talk. We are to speak words that build up, but not words that break down others. Our words are to be full of grace. We are to put off bitterness, wrath, slander, malice, and put on kindness, tenderness, and forgiveness. Paul exalted the, the Ephesians not only to implement what they have learned <clears throat> in Christ in adopting their new way of life, but he also exalted them to imitate God in adopting the new way of their life. Paul tells the Ephesians to imitate God by walking in love. Their lives were to be steeped in love. They were to love God and their neighbors. They were to live a life of love just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us to walk the Christian walk, a life of practical righteousness, we must adopt our new way of life. We must implement what we have learned and are learning in Christ about practical righteousness. We must imitate God in loving him and loving our neighbors. How is your Christian walk this morning? Are you avoiding the way of the old life? The life you live without Christ? Are you adopting the new way of life? The life of practical righteousness in Christ? Surrender to Jesus and let him help you walk as a Christian. He is our example 
He is our enabler. He will help you walk the Christian walk, a practical life of righteousness daily and victoriously. God bless you. Amen.